In this presentation, we will create a bank reconciliation for the month of April after having entered the data using bank feeds. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. Now we did the bank reconciliation for the prior month and it's gonna be much the same for the following month. So I won't go into as much detail, but just note you still wanna do the bank reconciliations. You still might be asking, why do I need to do the bank reconciliation since I pulled this information directly from the bank with the bank feeds and that should be the same as what's on the bank statement. So we still need to do the bank reconciliation to make sure that we don't duplicate information and to make sure that uh, we don't we haven't deleted something that we have information that is uh, complete that being said the bank reconciliation should be very easy to do because it will already even be checked off within the bank's bank reconciliation so if we've done everything properly it should just be a click of a few buttons as opposed to if we were doing a full service bookkeeping system where we would almost certainly have a difference of timing differences between the books and the state and uh, the statement so just realize that if, if you're doing a full service bookkeeping system, it's going to look a little bit different. Your bank reconciliation, the purpose of it, the ease at which you'll do it will be a little bit different. When you do the full service system and you enter the information into the first month, then sometimes you have a problem with the beginning balance, getting that beginning balance right. You still might have that problem with the, uh, the uh, entering the bank feeds. But it should be easier because you're just going to take that first month data directly from the beginning balance of the bank statement. So it should be an easy process to do. Uh, and then and then you're not going to have any problem. And then you'll have outstanding checks after the first month that will clear in the second month under a nor normal full service system. You don't have that problem here because there are no outstanding checks because the outstanding checks, you know, when we wrote the check, we didn't put them into QuickBooks typically if we're, if we're dependent completely on the bank. Now, again, you could be using some system using bank feeds in which you still do a full service bookkeeping system and then use QuickBooks to basically verify that something has cleared the bank. But if you're completely dependent on the bank, if you're waiting until that they clear the bank in order to enter them into the system, you're, you're not going to have that timing difference because we're not going to enter it into our system until they clear the bank. So under a full service bookkeeping system, the bank reconciliation that QuickBooks would typically generate after doing this process would look something like this. The meat of it is down here where we have the statement balance. This would be on the bank statement. We would have the book balance. This would be on our balance sheet. The difference being the outstanding checks and deposits. And then we would want to support those with the detail down below to actually list out the outstanding checks, which are these checks for the month of Mar or February and this deposit that's going to give us the details so we can reconcile exactly what the difference is in our system we would expect then for these two numbers to be exactly the same once we do the reconciliation because we're not going to have any timing differences given the fact that we took our information from the bank and didn't put it into our books and therefore no difference in timing so i'm going to close this back out now in our practice in this actual example we will have timing differences that resulted from uh, the first months, January and February, from February. Uh, but just note, there's no timing difference from April. And if you entered this from the beginning of this of the process, you would have no timing differences. So let's open up our report first. So we're going to go back to QuickBooks Online. We're going to go to the reports on the left-hand side. We'll open up our favorite report, that being the balance sheet report. Then we're going to scroll up top. We're going to change those dates up top. And we're going to be making them from... 010120 to 043320. Then I'm going to go ahead and run that report. I'm going to duplicate the tab up top by right clicking on it and duplicating it. Then I'm going to go back to the tab uh, to the left and we're going to go to the reconciliation process. That's going to be under accounting. You might be tempted to go to banking, by the way, because it's kind of in that in the banking section. In the uh, If you go to the desktop version, it's under banking. And then you would typically go to reconcile, or at least I do. There's a reconciling tab over to the right as well. But that's how I do it typically. So when I'm in online, I still kind of go to banking. But that's not where it's at here. It's at the accounting. And then you're on the second tab to the reconcile tab. Now, before we do this, let's go back to the balance sheet and just note, if I scroll up a bit, get into that 125, close up the whole the hamburger, we're at the 1853-1563 here. If I go then back to our uh, Excel worksheet, we're at the 186-62308. 
Now, again, if it was, if we were doing a full service, you know, bank fee, I mean, just a bank feed process and we're relying completely on the bank, we would expect those numbers to be the same as of the date of April 30th. They're different here because of the timing differences we had in uh, February, I would think. We'll double check that with the bank reconciliation process. So let's do it. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go back to the first tab here. We'll go back to the first tab. Hold down control. Scroll down just a bit so we can uh, get back to that uh, 100%. We have the 1907-2854. The ending balance is going to be from the bank statement 1866208. So that was 1866230.08, I believe. I hope 1866230.8. Yeah, that looks right. I think that's right. And then we're going to be ending off here on. Uh, let's. We can use the old calendar in April. So we're in April now. So we're going to say April 30th, end of April. Then I'm going to start the reconciliation process. And once again, like with March, it's basically reconciled already given the fact that you have a zero on this side. I'm going to close up the hamburger so we can see a bit more of this. And it's already reconciled. Why? Because it's checking off everything that cleared the bank in our system. So if I, if I scroll back down, everything that happened in April came directly from the bank feeds given the fact that we have these little green things. That's what the little green things are saying. That's what that means. And they checked them off for us uh, here. Now we can always, if there's an error, we can uncheck them. Like if I uncheck this one, then we're off by the 2047.50. But if everything goes smoothly, we should be able to check all these things off and we'd be okay. These items up top were the outstanding items from uh, February where we were not using the bank feeds. We were doing the full service reconciliation process, therefore had outstanding items. And then they never cleared because we never, you know, we we're not using the same system. We kind of just repeated the same data. So that's what's going to be our difference. In a normal system, the, the items that you don't check off would be outstanding items that have not yet cleared. Those would be the things that are going to cause the reconciliation. So when we go to the reconciliation report, then these items are going to be the reconciling items, the things that are outstanding, the things that we would typically expect to clear later. Now, again, if we were doing bank feeds fully dependent on the bank, we wouldn't have any. These things wouldn't be there. And this would be zero and we would have no reconciling differences. So these are all checked off for us. If they were not, then I would typically go first to the deposits because it's easier to see. These are all the inflows uh, to the bank and check them off. So I would say, all right, here's the 996 on the bank statement. I would always go from the bank statement over then to... The QuickBooks. Right? Here's the 996 on the bank statement. Then go to the QuickBooks and find it in uh, the QuickBooks. Now note it's a little bit more tricky to do this because we didn't deposit exactly as they're found on the bank statement. And so that you'll recall that we had to do some matching of multiple invoices. So this is kind of a problem with that when you do a bank reconciliation. So I'd have to say, all right, what, which one of these add up to that number? Here's the 525.6 plus 470.85. There's the 99645. So see how that's a little bit tedious to do. You could do it, but when you have a lot of deposits, it gets a little tedious. So you can say, all right, there's that. How about the 17,000? Well, if I go if I go back over and say, can I find the 17,000? Again, I didn't deposit in, in the same format that it shows on the bank statement, but I can be like, all right, well, I think that's that 8,000 plus the 9,000. There's the 17,000. So again, a bit tedious to do. You don't want to do that. You would like it to be showing up in your books the same format that it shows up on the bank statement. And see, then we have the 2047.50 here, and that one ties out to the 2047.50. So the deposits have that little tricky kind of thing that you want to be careful of. If you have other things like credit cards and that, and it goes through a credit card statement, then you want to, uh, that's another kind of uh, hurdle that you got to think about. Well, how can I get this thing to batch in my statement as they'll appear ultimately on the, uh, on the bank statement? You might have to work with like the credit card company and and the bank to tie this thing out say hey look we need to get this thing tied out so that they are are i can reconcile easily all right and then we have the payments if we go to the payment side you do would, would do the same thing the payments usually are more of them but they're usually more straightforward if they're coming directly from the bank we have the date we often have a check number if it was a check we have the payee oftentimes and again they're coming from the bank feeds here you can see here and then of course we have the amount so given all that information, we can typically tie these out pretty directly. We don't typically have any numerical differences between the outflows 
uh, you know, the grouping of the outflows. It's not going to be consisting of multiple outflows. So there's the 11,000 and here's the, the 500. You always want to be going from the bank statement here. So I would be going back over to the bank statement. Here's the 360 and then go back over here. There, there's the 360 and so on and so forth. And if you, so if you're off, you want to go in and, and double check all those. And then when this is a green zero, it means you have, you know, you have reconciled. If it's anything other than zero, even if it's like $4, way lower on the verification than if it were zero. So you really want it to be zero. If it's anything other than zero, then it could be uh, some kind of, of uh, combination between deposits and checks that aren't entered that results in a small difference. But if it's zero, then you're pretty, you're pretty certain that it's okay. If you go to finish up top and it's not zero, you can force QuickBooks to then enter a transaction to enter the difference. But, but again, you want to avoid that. You might say, oh, what's the difference? Three cents of, you know, $3 of a transaction. It doesn't make, and it doesn't make it a $3 is going to be immaterial on your bank statement on, on your uh, reports. Doesn't $3 doesn't matter. The point is that the fact that it's off by $3 means that the, there could be multiple deposits and checks that are resulting in only a $3 difference. So the $3 difference itself isn't a problem to, to enter that as an adjustment. But the fact that it's off by $3 means there may be other things. It's the likelihood of other things not being included is great, which could be uh, you know a lot more than $3 in terms of deposits and checks, some kind of combination between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the reconciliation here. So we'll finish this up. It says success, reconcile it, uh, your account. Let's go ahead and view the report this time. So we're going to view the report. And then here we have our report. Now, again, they give us way too much information. We have, to, but you know, this is what we have. We got the 19728. That's on the bank statement, right? We got the 19728 beginning balance. Then we have the 241941. Here's uh, the 24,149,41, the outflows, inflows 20,043,95. There's the 20,043,95, the ending balance then being on the bank statement, the 186,623,08. So there's the 186,623,08. Then we have the reconciling items and the amount on the books. So the amount on the books, 185,315,63. If I then go back uh, to the bank, the balance sheet, that's the 185, 315, 63 as of the ending date, April 30th. If I go back to the statement, again, normally those two would be the same if we're completely reliant on the bank feeds. If we're not entering anything into our system until it clears the bank, those two things would be the same. They're not in this example problem because of outstanding items we had in March or February which we never cleared because we kind of switched systems here. So we had outstanding items prior that basically never cleared. Now, if that happens in real life, obviously, if, no, if something doesn't clear for a long period of time, it's probably the case that there's an error in the data input and, you, you know, you'd remove them at some point, right? But in any case, or, or you know, uh, void them or make an adjustment for them. But that 1307, then if I scroll down, is composed of these items that happened in uh, February and in a, a full service bookkeeping system, you would have these timing differences and you'd want to know exactly what the checks were that did not clear and then check the following month to see if they had cleared. If this was a, a real life situation and we had these in, uh, in February and they hadn't cleared and it's already, it's through April, it could be the case that they're checks that someone didn't cash them still, you know, they're just holding on to the check. However, you know, we get more concerned about them as to whether they're legitimate transactions or not and whether or not these checks should be, should be voided or, uh, or removed or have an adjustment for them in some way. And then we have the outstanding deposit. So if we take the difference between these two, that's going to be the 3006.2 minus the 1698.75. That's the 430745. And that's going to be our difference here, the 430745.